one. <laughs> That's the next one. Here's good. Ready? Here's birds, right? <laughs> I love how soft it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's you waking up in the morning. <laughs> so I do the hand so it gives a sense of... Okay, no, here's a crusher, and I shouldn't okay. even bring this Let out here because you don't deserve Let it. Let Mr. Sound Here's the bird flying away. And then, thank you. Good night. Here's an old fashioned dial phone for you, ancients. <laughs> okay. Bring, 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 bring. Hello. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Try to beat it and go a little louder. Can you do this sound? <laughs> like Predator? It's just sort of a... No. Okay. Can you do this sound? No, I don't care. Can you do this? Uh, can you do an octopus? Watch. <laughs> can you do Anthony Hopkins in uh, as Hannibal Lecter? I... I can smell him, Garth. I once did Garth. <laughs> I can with, smell him, Garth. <laughs> I did Gar. I played Garth, and and Anthony Hopkins played Hannibal Lecter, and we mm. would entertain the crew on a movie we did together. I can smell you, Garth. <laughs> I can smell Wayne. <laughs> I'll do Garth. <laughs> He'd be like, oh, hey, man. <laughs> hey, you it's all in the weird. jaw. It's all you got to do is the jaw. Remember Kristen Wiig at the 40th goes, why does he hold his mouth that way? She, was, she seemed a little upset. I'm from a woman who has 100 characters. I'm a laugh machine. I do voices and effects to make people happy. Dana... Dana, who is married, you were married in 1950. 57. 1957, I got married. And, no, uh, I met her at 19 when she was 19. I raised her as one of my own. <laughs> That's nice. That's what Elvis did with Priscilla. Huh? <laughs> hey, Priscilla, uh, you're 14. You got to wait four more years. He I'm bringing you in from Berlin. When she was 20, she wasn't sexy anymore. Okay. Uh, I'd so like a perker damn sandwich. Lorraine Hello. Newman is on the show today. And, uh, yes. Lorraine Newman, one of the OGs from SNL. Um, very lucky, I would say to hit that lightning time of being on the show that just blew mm -hmm. the fuck up. And she has a, a true adorableness level. Like there's something yeah. very sweet about her. Very likeable. She's cute. You know, when you're in college stuff, you liked all the, all the women. I don't know if women understand how much men find smart, funny women attractive. David? Yeah. Yeah, that's You're true. You're the bachelor. Tina Fey, I have a crush on Tina Fey. There's a lot of girls out there that just got that smart, funny thing, and uh, they don't even need to be Robin Williams. They just they have a clever thing about them, sort of charismatic deal that I like. Now, And me, uh, that being said- I don't understand. Where are we going? She is one of the original- Oh, yeah. Members of the original cast, the rock stars of the from 1975 on, Lorne Michaels' cadre of- Funsters. Cadre. Cadre of Funsters. <laughs> That's another podcast. But she got to work with Belushi, Aykroyd, Garrett Morris, Chevy Chase. Like, what a fun. Jane Curtin. Mixed bag. Gil great people. She yeah. was a conehead for crying out loud. That's really what I'm going for. She's a conehead. And I did the Coneheads movie and I didn't get to wear a cone. And what? Wah, you wah. know what? Did you, when did you first get that, hey, wait a minute, their heads look like cones? And that's why they're called Coneheads. When did you realize that? Um, one second in. Um, <laughs> did anyone take long? So let me give you a quiz, <laughs> pop quiz. If okay. their heads were oblong shaped, what would they be called? Oblong heads? Yes. Okay. If they're... <laughs> How about this? Did you know that Arby's is because of roast beef, RB? Nope, you did not. Well, no, slow down by three quarters. RB, rhythm and RB, RB? RB, roast beef. That's why it's called Arby's. Oh, got it. Okay. Hmm. I, like and I, I didn't said, know Togo's was because it's to go. I didn't know that. Do you know Jack in the Box is called that because the owner jacked off in a box? I didn't know that. <laughs> no, but I, I did jack off in a box once. Let's look at a clip. <laughs> My mother's maiden name was McDonald's. <laughs> oh, those late nights. Is that weird? <laughs> All right, we better get to L uh, Lorraine. Lorraine Newman. Newman. I adore her. She's so funny and so charming. Um, I did a benefit once. She was there, brought her daughter. Daughter's a big star, too. But on the daughter, show, don't say what one. I won't say which one. Her daughter was like 10, and I was up there, and I was kind of at the latter stages of my teen idleness. And so <laughs> later on, Lorraine, I ran into her at the West Side, a comedy club mm -hmm. in Santa Monica, and she goes, you were my daughter's first sort of crush on a an adult figure. Mm. And... Uh, 
That was kind of flattering. All right, we got that story in. You guys, here's Lorraine Newman. <laughs> That's my best story. <laughs> You know what? I'll give Lorraine a compliment right off the bat, right? <laughs> Ready? Everyone loves Lorraine. <laughs> Lorraine, Lorraine. You, you have a great voice. And um, not that I'm flirting, but w- when you when women say, what, or people say, what do you like about women? One of my weird things, is not that weird, but aside from the basics, <laughs> oh, I like this and this, that all guys like. A voice is very interesting because it's very unique on every person. And even as you get older people recognize your voice like they know mine from the emperor's new groove which was a cartoon movie i did a long time ago and mm-hmm. so when i'm in 7-eleven no people no touchy people, no touchy Every, everybody in my family all my kids know that reference oh they know did that you ever movie? think did you ever think no but i was telling that whole story just to get <laughs> to see if th- that they knew my movie um, but uh, no, but you, you have, have a, a recognizable I, voice, David. You have a recognizable, and, and, she, and she has a good voice. That's uh, right off. Lorraine the bat, has like, a very yep. seductive, uh, smooth, uh, feminine voice. You know where it really came in handy? E. Buzz Miller. Weren't you the the girlfriend or yeah, something? Yeah, Christy Christina, a character that I never understood why anybody thought that was funny. <laughs> I never ever thought that character was funny. I just was like, you know, well, they gave me the part. I'm going to do the best I can. And uh, they even made this kind of piece that that gave me those boobs with the, you know, the little Mm -hmm. bullet nipples because (laughs) it was actually a rubber piece that went, you know, under the leotard. So it's a weird meeting that they probably don't have anymore. Uh. Who knows? Yeah. Well, okay, Lorraine. When you do a, when you do a part like that, I think SNL people want to, and we can talk about anything. But on the SNL tip, when Dane and I've been in that in that mix, and it's probably similar when you were there. But is that Danny Aykroyd is writing something up, or someone else? They walk by, knock on your door, and go, "Hey, do you want to be in this thing? We're writing it up. It's Tuesday night <laughs> where you play." Is that kind of how it goes? The way that it went with you is exactly the way it went with us. I remember listening to Andy Samberg on a radio show, and he mm-hmm. talked about the schedule, like Monday, meet the, meet the host, yeah. pitch some ideas. Lauren says, work on that. Everybody works until Wednesday. Yeah. She'll read through, you know, the whole thing, choosing what, you know, build the sets. Yeah, everything. and and you guys didn't have... They probably ironed out a lot of the problems. You probably had a little rougher as far as oh yeah, really yeah. Well, together. we didn't we we didn't have WordPress. We didn't have I wasn't there during uh, being <laughs> online and stuff. So I did go back to host at one point. Bill Hader and John Mulaney were there, and they're like, oh, we'll we'll click up this sketch that you did from dress that was cut in oh, 1987. Wow. So they have everything in oh, a database. My God. I wouldn't even so think of that. And I I you know when you never know what's going to land with people. So. I had done a sitcom with Mickey Rooney and he's the freakiest person ever, you know, hysterical. I have a Mickey and, Rooney and, story, but go oh, ahead. Mickey Rooney. And, oh, and so, so then I just took Mickey's lines or some sketch Bonnie and Terry Turner were doing old fashioned movie stars. So I, I just told them stuff Mickey had said. I was the number one star in the world. You hear me? <laughs> Bang. The world. So I just did Mickey's lines and I had prosthetic makeup. So I go there. And Bill Hader and John Mulaney, they just go, well, our favorite thing you've ever done is Mickey Rooney. <laughs> so just wow. one of those things. Well, Mickey that's Rooney. a great impression of him. Uh, what What is the language code on this show? Oh, you can yeah. say whatever you want. Uh, what the motherfuck? Do you, was, okay. What, are you, what were right. you saying? <laughs> so I did a movie that um, I had had nightmares that had been released and I would wake up sweating. Um, and it was called uh, Revenge of the Red Baron. And it was the kind of thing where I said to my agent, just ask for this amount of money. They'll never agree to it and be over. Well, they agreed to it. (laughs) And it was a Roger (laughs) Ah, Corman. It was a Roger Corman movie. Okay. And I'm thinking, well, you know, Catherine Bigelow started with Roger Corman. But no, this was some schlepper that had been cutting his movies for 20 years. But Tobey Maguire played my son. Mm. Um, Cliff Young was in it. And a lot of it was written by Mike McDonald from the Groundlings in Mad yeah. TV. Okay, so yeah. it could be good. So, and there were some Groundlings in it, and so I thought, kinda well, safe. you know, kind of safe. Mickey Rooney would say those things. You know, I was the biggest star. <laughs> and then as he's as he's hitching his trousers, he <laughs> yeah. when I was having my single, and he was in my peripheral vision, 
he would spit in his hand and make masturbatory gestures and then squirt the spit out of his <laughs> hand like it was semen. Talk about okay. painting a picture, Lorraine. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yes. Man. Yeah, can you imagine? I thought I was the only one that did that on sets. That's always a real I fun I know we one. shouldn't speak ill of the dead. But no, not boy. at all. He was just the most bitter person. It was so funny. He had a thirty eight revolver with him. And he would pull it out sometimes. This script is caca. And he's kind of waving it around. <laughs> he, uh, She's reliving say, it in her head. I would go to work. It would be Rockefeller Center on the sixth floor, six years before I got on the eighth floor. And I'd hear him down the hallway. You know, Judy Garland never owned a car. <laughs> never you owned a car. Why? And then he would get really close to your face because they pumped her so full of drugs they killed her. He would talk oh, until God. the air, there was no more air left. And um, once you've worked with Mickey, I mean, Nathan and I had so many stories about working with Mickey, but yeah, he could be crude. He said he had an idea for a show where every character's name was a swear word and he would act it out for like 20 minutes. Hello, Mrs. Fuck. I'm Mr. Shit. How are you, motherfucker? And it went on for like 20 minutes. Dude, I, don't know. I could get that sold. Well, I actually saw him say to an actor, um, <laughs> have you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior? Hey, would you look at the tits on that one? You know, it was like, right. You know, uh, and he was same. phoning it in. He was in Sugar Babies on Broadway doing the sitcom. So we'd have to act to this guy who was like 30 years old, but he was five feet tall. All week long, we would rehearse with him. <laughs> And Mickey would have giant cue cards. And he was just, and he would always had cash because he'd been broke for decades. And Sugar Babies, he was making money on the sitcom. So he'd pull out like $5,000 and put it right up to your face and go, think I can afford lunch? Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> There's but, too many well, stories. We don't want to make so it all curious. about I'm so curious. What were you doing on the sixth Baller. floor for, did you say yeah, four years? Dana. I was doing, a uh, pretty long story short, I was doing uh, stand-up in San Francisco NBC people came up. I had kind of this uh, uh, innocent uh, Timmy Lassie look going on. I was uh, kind of funny, whatever. So I got a deal with NBC, a holding deal, $50,000 up front against things I That's would be lot. doing. I was on the Marie Osmond Variety Show as a, wow. as a sketch player for like a day. Uh, but anyway, uh, then all of a sudden I got a call from NBC. You're going to play Mickey Rooney's grandson on a sitcom in New York. And Nathan Lane had auditioned in LA. We flew back out on a 747. George Burns was playing cards. Anyway, everything oh was God. surreal. And it was wow. in Rockefeller Center on the sixth floor. And then I would go up to the eighth floor on Thursdays, watching them run through the thing, Joe Piscopo and Eddie Murphy, and going, oh man, I want to be up here. But I was cast as a straight man for many years because I just had, and I had no confidence. I had no I had ambition, but I had no real confidence, which kind of comes full circle a little bit to your story. When I'm watching Saturday Night Live from 75 to 80, uh, you're, you were the Beatles. You were, you were rock stars. You were more than comedians because you were the first. And I was so in awe of, of the show, the idea that I would be on it. And I don't know how you felt because you get on and the show's not the show yet. It's still, yeah. maybe it'll get canceled. Yeah. So can you just talk a little bit about that very, very bare beginning? Were you there for the first show of the 75 season? You're there and who's with you? Is everyone there? Chevy? Everybody's there. Um, in the last, uh, like, you know, the 11th hour, it was between Billy and Chevy. Which, really? Yeah, which huh. killed me because I had never... Um, seen Billy, except I, I, he was one of the first people I met. I, my first friend was Gilda Radner, and she took me up to uh, a recording session for a National Lampoon album, the one that's called That's Not Funny, That's Sick. So I'm yeah. on that album, but I meet Harold Ramis and wow. Chris Guest and Landall Murray and Bill Murray. Jeez. And so I got a sense of what Billy had, and then I saw his mm -hmm. audition. I'm thinking, oh boy, you know. And then they chose Chevy. Wait, they waited and they that couldn't long. They couldn't have both of them. <laughs> and that's that's what I thought. That's what I had hoped. But they had Belushi and Aykroyd yes. already. Yes. And they felt like well, now they have 32 cast members that they could have. <laughs> back I then, know. it was just how, how many know. was it with you guys? Seven. So explosive. I mean, I really want to talk through this a lot, but just for a second, I I just because of. Everyone's uh, love of Gilda Radner 
and your whole cast. But what? But she just seems so likable. I mean, was she just really fun and just a genuine? I mean, all of you and uh, Jane. You know, I don't know. There's just a likability that whole cast. But speak to Gilda for a second. Well, um, she was a really good person. That's nice and, to know. <laughs> uh, she was the person that, you know, made a fuss over your birthday. Mm-hmm. And just... Um, Very sweet. You know, she and I found ourselves in some pickles, which I talk about in my book. Oh, and, and what is the name of the book? <laughs> yeah. we, called, maybe we'll get a big following. Well, yeah. <laughs> May you live in interesting times. <laughs> and, um, you know, nice. one was that when we did the New Orleans, live from New Orleans special, mm-hmm. the technology... Oh, right. You know, for doing green screen and shifting from one set to another was like a minute old. And everything that could have gone wrong did. But the days before, during the rehearsal process, Gilda and I were put into a room in a building at a part of town. We did not know where we were. We were scared to go out because we were literally getting mobbed. And we were in this room with nothing but chairs and a trash can with one of those lids that you step on a pedal and the lid goes yeah. up. Mm. They forgot about us for four hours. <laughs> oh, God. We're in this room for four hours, and Gilda turned that trash can into a puppet. <laughs> because that's the kind of person she was, Sweet. you know? Nice. And, uh, God, there's, there's just so many times that she and I, for some reason, you know, but we also just... Um, you know, would have breakfast together before we went into work, and you that's know. The, you know. I think it comes across, and I I don't know if Lauren honed this later, or you think about there's the funny part, there's the likability part, or, and then there's the charisma, and finally there's how might they work together? You know, uh, will they? You know, kind of like a sitcom. You know, you have this this key piece, this piece, this piece. But I think everyone who's gone through that, you never lose a certain kind of bond with your cast, especially unknown people, not famous at all, (laughs) no money at all, going on this television show. And I was 10 years later in 86, but you don't, you still feel that esprit de corps with, with your original cast. If you run into Dan Aykroyd or whoever, or, you know, it's an extraordinary experience. As you know, it is an extraordinary experience. And I always liken it to a lifeboat Mm -hmm. where, you know, you all survive something some of us didn't, but yeah. you all survived something that was very extraordinary. I was I was on Dennis Miller's show uh, a couple of weeks ago, mm-hmm. and we talked about the very same thing. And I, he mentioned the movie The Right Stuff, which I think of this scene every time people ask about the camaraderie of the cast and the closeness. Where they're backstage, I think Lyndon Johnson is introducing I've seen it them movie many times. Yes. Yeah, that yes. scene where they're backstage and they're all just kind of looking at one another, like oh, I guess we we did this thing that nobody else has ever done. Yeah. You know, and obviously I'm not comparing our show <laughs> to s- space exploration, right. but, you know, it was the better. same feeling. <laughs> you, well, I would say, uh, you know, uh, w- without that analogy, but in terms of show business, uh, especially as the show grew live, I remember just doing a cold opening in one as the president or whatever. And just the whole weight of the show is on you. And then there's that Joe Disco, five, Disco, five I, seconds. I and you're just, five five, seconds. you're like floating. And then you're just reading the card and hoping that you're articulating. That is a lot of pressure, you know, I think in, in show business. I don't know if there's any more, anything that currently exists live like that. And they weren't we ready. came they, from that background. I'm sorry. What did you say, David? I, uh, uh, everything I say is important, so everyone has to listen closely. <laughs> Keep going. Um, I was just saying that when Dana and I were on, there was a chance you could get famous or being just being on it, you'd get a little bump in fame, even if you suddenly didn't click or whatever. But with you guys, you seem like a, a very sweet woman and Gilda and all those people together and not knowing that it's such a whopper and, and getting the biggest hit out of it that anyone's gotten must mess with your head like you were saying just walking the street or getting breakfast and you feel like do i deserve this or why what's going on here and why are so many people thinking this is so great even though you think it's fun but i think it i don't think anyone can prep for that well you kind of i mean since you're part of this era it really when you think about um the evolution of comedy from laugh in 
And Lauren used to say, it's fucking Carol Burnett. I, I'm sure he loves Her. Carol Burnett, but he, but he had a thing about breaking in scenes when we were there. He didn't want yes. you to break. Yeah. But the rock and roll, George Carlin, Richard Pryor thing had started. And then it all of a sudden, this sketch show manifests itself with this kind of post 1960s, early 70s comedy sensibility, right? Well, it was alt comedy. That's what I've yeah. come to realize is yeah. that, yes, you had your show of shows and Carol Burnett and, mm -hmm. you know, laugh in. in, but those were really mainstream and written by actors, uh, writers mm -hmm. that were not mm -hmm. our age, did not mm -hmm. have our references or sensibility. Mm -hmm. And this was truly uh, an amalgam of a bunch of really great minds like Michael O'Donohue and Herb Sargent and you know, Franken and Davis and all these amazing people <laughs> whose tone and yeah. style had never been seen before. And then you also have the references that we all came with. I mean, you know, I came with these characters that I had done at the Groundlings. And so, you you know, you talk about the format. That's exactly what I came from is doing a sketch, yeah. running off stage in the dark, changing my costume, coming Great back training. in the dark, lights come up and you go. I mean, that's what I came from. And that's, you know, Jane came from the proposition. You know, uh, Gilda came from Second City in the Lampoon show. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we all had that background. Did you, um, were you the first or one of the first on television to do the Valley Girl voice kind of, or it? I, it feels like I that, mean, because yeah. that is still around and I it's, know. Or, it's organic yeah. too. You're welcome. Uh, um, yeah. How did you, how did you hatch that? Where did, where did that come from? That was in your early groundling time? I, I had always noticed even in high school that the people from the Valley spoke differently. And mm -hmm. my twin brother was so a surfer. Funny. He still is, actually. And um, so I'd go to the beach with him every once in a while. And, you know, there was this whole thing about the Valley Surfers versus yeah. the Malibu Surfers and the West Side Surfers. And, you know, but I did my ear picked up because I'd always loved dialects. I'd always picked up on them. Mm -hmm. There was, you know, when I was four years old, there was an Orange Julius stand in, in Westwood Village run by this Scottish couple who would say things to me like, would you like your hot dog steamed or grilled? And I would just, you know, grab on to that kind so of you stuff. So yeah. you were doing that at age four? No, I wasn't accent? doing it. I was noticing it. Yeah. You know, but then I was, I did start doing dialects very young. Mm -hmm. But uh, that was, yeah, I started hearing that valley accent and realizing that it was a very unique accent. So many people have used it. I mean, it's just. Yeah, well, that's it's become, the whole thing. You bit it just I think. Did, were you I, I'm I'm familiarizing me with your take on it. Did you do the thing, oh my god, or how did you no. process it? That became later. I don't know who did that, yeah. but <laughs> no, I think that uh, Moon Unit did oh my god. Oh, okay. <laughs> um but um you know, I break down that dialect in my book. And um <laughs> Which is called <laughs> You Should Have an Interesting Life or what? May, Sorry. may you live an interesting time. May you live an interesting life right now on everywhere books are sold, Lorraine Newman. Uh, audible. Um audible. and uh you know, contractions like wouldn't, shouldn't, or couldn't would become wouldn't, shouldn't, and couldn't. You know, and ing endings were E E N, so I'm going there huh. and things like that. It's just and then there was also words like bitchin' And yeah. super that came right. before, you know, like in my monologue uh, in the Godfather group therapist sketch, I said, you know, I had to get super reflective. You know, it was mm -hmm. that that was the language and the dialect that I kind of. That was great. To that well, you I just did. Oh, yeah, that. that is still around. That by was way. like super reflective. Can you do that again? <laughs> I had to get super reflective. God, even that like voice grainy. um that that's out there too with every girl in the bachelor but yes th lorraine but, what is underneath that i just want to know for a second the process i mean like someone who talks like that is it is it a, a, an elitism or is it uh trying to be cool or what what is kind of behind someone who would change their voice like that? i'm just thinking out loud like i, I don't that's think people reflective. change their voice to it i don't think they change their voice to it i think that it becomes ubiquitous yeah and there's a is there a charm to it I'm just, a sexuality to it is i'm just wondering why where it came from but anyway we may never figure <laughs> well, that out exactly doesn't charm me one fucking bit yeah. but uh, the stoner dude the male version was like most like Spicoli, i don't know yeah. what you're yeah. talking about man this is crazy dude but that also was like if she being, does that then 
everything, even Moon Unit, it's all sort of a spinoff of that ground, laying the groundwork, like, you know, someone doing Lauren the first time or Christopher Walken Ugh. and everyone's kind of doing that version, but mm -hmm. you're laying, everyone's like, oh, that's a thing now. So they're kind of playing off that one and building on it. So yeah, that's Frank the hard Zappa. thing is to come up with the code. Like Frank Zappa? He, he loved that character. He absolutely loved it and wanted to do something with it, and it just never happened. And he's also, he was from Cucamonga. He was from the Valley. Cucamonga. So he absolutely, you know. Frank Zappa. I, I, I did him once on the show, and <laughs> Michael, Michael Thomas did such a great job with my makeup, and I came out of the room, and Eric Clapton was in the hallway. Sorry, folks, name dropping, but that's what that's Saturday Night okay. Live does. Michael Thomas. Oh, uh, he was my guy, brilliant, funny, so uh, fucking funny. He made and vampire so teeth for me. Did he? Oh, yeah. Michael Thomas, for everyone listening, was one of the quintessential brilliant makeup artists, and he could move so fast yeah. and do little things, and you'd sit in the chair, and you'd get more and more into character, and he would keep doing stuff, and then he had such a funny ear. I was doing a show a few years later, and I was asked to do all these classic impressions, like Groucho Marx. It was a Easter special. I was Rich Little, and I didn't really have them, and so he... He taught me Jack Benny, and then I would go out and do Jack Benny. And oh then he, my so this God. is how you do Groucho. So he also had an ear and he loved monsters, but God rest his soul. Yeah. You know, loved him. Loved him. I'm so glad you had a connection with him. He was yeah. such a great. You Did you start the Groundlings or you were part of the founding people? Yeah, one of the founding members. That's yeah. great. That's so cool. Wow. And that was in LA. Who knew? Yeah. Who knew? So SNL is like the Groundlings, but suddenly when you leave, everyone has seen it. It's so funny. You can do a. A sketch, walk in your room and someone could text you and say, great one. I was in Oklahoma. I just saw it. And you're like, <laughs> it's such a mind blower. Yeah. There's a, there's a thing going on in the Groundlings now where people would stay in the main company and they just wouldn't leave. And even though it's like, you know, they're on series television now, they just don't oh. leave. So that what they started to do to get them to leave was to do a retrospective and a celebration to just you know, and, <laughs> to get uh, him out the door. <laughs> and I always marveled at the technology because they had the the you know ability to film their sketches. And yeah. when we did our 40th anniversary, the mm -hmm. the people from the 1970s, we just did straight improv because there was no we had never filmed any of our sketches. But later on, of course, everybody had, you know, early Melissa McCarthy, early Kristen Wiig, early Maya Rudolph, you know, it was just great stuff to see. I wish that when I was there and it was sort of with all of us, if you missed a sketch, then you waited for the rerun six months later. And if, the, if you missed it again, you might have been in the best of in the summer, but that's a long shot. And now I don't get to see the show as much, so... If Monday on Yahoo News or wherever you are on your computer, Hulu. sometimes it just yes. says, here's a sketch from, and they give you the best one. And then you go, oh, the show is pretty funny still, even though who knows how much of the show it's always like hit and miss, but you, that keeps it alive. I think that's a big part of why it's still out there and still killing it. Well, now it's uh, 1.6 billion YouTube hits last year for their season which is extraordinary. Oh, wow. And then wow. it's now it, I don't know if it still is, but Peacock, I think you can watch it live at 8.30 on the West Coast. So uh, it's it's evolved in so many yeah. ways. The interesting part of you, about you and Gilda and, and Jane being the first women, and there's all these, you know, the, the society has evolved. <laughs> and we were talking to Anna Gasteyer, who's another great performer. Uh, and... Just the idea that how many women have emerged in such a big way in the last 20 years mm -hmm. in some of the ones you were mentioning. But it was three on your cast. Then there, there was those intermediate casts. I know Julie Louise Dreyfus yeah. was on. We had um, Jan Hooks, Nora Dunn, oh, and Victoria Jan Jackson. Hooks. Oh, yeah. God. Jan those Hooks, the, we, she's oh, supernatural. I love as good that as reaction anyone. to Jan Hooks. That's such so, a good... So unbelievably funny. Yeah. Oh, just, God. Just balls out funny <laughs> oh god and and uh funny off stage we had so many laughs we would just get you know when you get so tired in a, a stressful job like that you get laugh laughing fits oh yeah and like like your little kids i remember yeah. one time phil had a suit on the late great phil hartman and we called him the glue because he was uh -huh. like our danny Aykroyd or something yeah. what do you what do you need this week 
you know, yeah. and he didn't even, it was effortless for Phil. But Jan and I just saw his, his tie or something. And we were just, it's like we were stoned. We were so tired. Oh, sure. That's out. a great you know place I mean? to be though. Don't you it love is. it? It is. You're just so weak. You can't not laugh. I have a question about L- Lorraine about, you know, we had in our run, Chris Farley, you guys had John Belushi and Jen, Chris lo- looked up to John so much, um, because they were sort of, you know, bigger guys and physic, very, very physical. I remember even in in wardrobe, he would find pants for a sketch, and he'd look in it, and it would say Belushi. They still oh had them, God. and he'd wear them, and then he'd wear his pants over those because oh he wanted God. to have anything. And at, at one point, I said, "Chris, you're as good as Belushi." I mean, I hate to sound like blasphemous, but I go, oh, he is. "We we all love he Belushi," is. and I go, "Chris, you're at the point where when we go down the street." It, it's you're so good that I would put you in the same. Uh, and he would never buy that. Never, he would never, buy it. never. And it was here, hard. Here, here's the along. thing that I have to say about all of that because when I hear people say your cast was the best cast, I say no. The cast that was on when you were an adolescent is the best cast yeah, that because is they've always right. had great casts. Always, always had great casts and great writers. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, guys, your years had you guys and the people around you. There have always been great casts and people that don't even know ours. They said we're bad. (laughs) And then later they say we're good. It's so funny that when we're there, they're like, you missed the good people. They were just here. You guys suck. And then later they go. Saturday Night Live dead. It has been funny since you went to the left. That that never ended. Lauren goes, Saturday Night Dead. It's going to get every year. It'll be a headline. That's a good impression. I oh, cannot let do Dana it do it. He's the guy. Uh, the problem uh, with uh, the critics, they're they're like really into their own thing. It's that <laughs> thing of like, you know, you have to be um, really light on your feet. It'd be nice if this sketch was like, uh, you know, funny would be a good thing. <laughs> I, we love Lauren's sarcasm. Did he, he overcome he, saying things like absolutely or no, 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 no. Did no, he? No, 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 we no. definitely have no, 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 don't, don't misunderstand me. Mostly it would be exactly if you were telling Telling him something exactly. exactly. Well, you know, he was always the same, but uh, now that we we have data now, we have almost 50 years of this show, it's hard to imagine another human individual navigating it like Lorne. He was so good with the network and all that part of it. Oh, yes. He was very good with the hosts. And he also was, I think because he's a, a very, very smart guy, he could get all those Ivy League guys to come in and respect him. You know, the Harvard guys and, you know, because sure. I went to San Francisco State, but everyone, you know, they would all <laughs> giggle when I would mispronounce a word and read through. And I go, you fuckers, I'll get you on the stage. That was intimidating. <laughs> I don't know if they, you guys, you guys had great writers, Lorraine, but it got, it got very Harvardy when I was there from Scottsdale Community College. And I could just tell it was very clear. I was in over my head and it takes a while to, to, to figure out, like, I don't know if you wrote, but I think you did, but how to write a sketch or how to fit in with these guys and just get to the level. I just want to go and read through and say, I don't want everyone to go, what the fuck? Who wrote this? I just want it to be like, oh, we're not doing it, but it's sort of mixed into the bunch, you know, because sometimes I, I would write something and I didn't know how to write and I just got that yellow pad and they would be like, that's eight pages too long. I'm like, well, no one is talking to me. I don't I <laughs> oh, mean, no one, God. no one tells you anything. Was that the same when you were there in the 70s? We have to, you have to yes. learn it yourself or ask other cast members. Absolutely. But we, you know. Yeah. Nobody tells you anything. And um, I didn't quite get that it would be good if I were to a- align myself with a writer who could really get me. But yeah. fortunately it worked out that way anyway. And O'Donohue and Schiller and, and Rosie Schuster, they really wrote beautifully for me. And, you know, I brought us some of the material that I had done at the Groundlings I brought yeah. there, but that was basically how it worked because I did not know how I, the things I did in the Groundlings were what we now call in ones or down lefts, which were just character monologues. Yeah. I am a shitty improviser, shitty, you know, uh, so, uh, you know, the, I don't know how to write a sketch. People think we improvise on Saturday Night Live, but you don't improvise. No. Yeah, people think you do, but, yeah. but But backstage you do. You know, uh, just for a second, Rosie Schuster came back 
Lauren's ex-wife, one of them, and she was assigned to me. I just done this character in my stand-up. I didn't do it all day long. I never wore a dress. Was this church lady person? Oh my and so god! So we d- we sat for a couple weeks, you know, making the talk show out of it. And she was the one who said, "Ah, uh, church chat," you know. And she was very, very good. Oh yeah, yeah, what a really good good writer. Yeah, really beautiful. Yeah, so that Lauren loves that when the writers in the cast get together. And I actually talked to a young cast member recently who wanted to talk to me. I won't say, you know, who it was, who's currently on the show and struggling a little bit with the process. I said, well, fine, whatever your rhythm of your character is, you know, collect your, your hooks or, or what, what makes it funny and crunchy to you. Seek out a writer that has influence and and maybe would want. So at the ground floor, while the sketch is being written, your rhythms are being integrated. Don't wait where they've written jokes and then you're trying to put your character into it. Exactly. Make sure you do it together. So it sounds like you had that with Michael Donahue and yeah. Rosie and all, all the rest. Yeah. That's when Lauren loves that thing, too. It's It's mm-hmm. like. It's like the Congress and the Senate are getting along or something. He, wants, he doesn't want one side to dominate too much. Yeah, well, Conan O'Brien talks about not knowing how to write a sketch and how he really started out by just, like, telling somebody stories. And people would say, yeah, you should write that as a sketch. Yeah. But, you know, the idea that any... Any writer would come there not knowing how to write a sketch. Well, I auditioned to be on the show. And then they say, "We're me and Rob Schneider, and they go, you're hired, but you're... They liked your (laughs) stand-up, but they liked the writing of it, so... Which is not, which is good and bad news because they go, he wants to be a writer performer. And then they go, oh, maybe Chevy was, I don't know who was, but I He go, was just hired as a writer. Chevy uh, was just oh, hired really? as a writer. Yes. That's, I mean, yeah. Garrett and Chevy were hired as writers. Oh, huh. that's, I did not know that. That's cool. Yes. Right now, how long till Billy came on? Was it three years? No. Uh, actually, it was uh, right away, second wasn't year. It? Oh, second year. Yeah, because second Chevy year. did like one Chevy and a half left. seasons. Oh, yeah, exactly. yeah, whatever. Okay. He was on the cover of Time or whatever he was. He just blew up from the show. Yeah. And then he always regretted leaving. You know, when he would come back and host, he talked about wishing he'd stayed longer. Sure, for yeah. sure. I mean, it's I hard to I think once you leave it, again. you can never go back, you know. Once you what? I, once you leave SNL, you're never going to do. I thought you said once you diva. You never come back. Oh, funny. I was thinking, that's, that's, good. <laughs> I, that's better than what I just said. So I did say that, Lorraine. Okay. Once you diva, but once you leave, you can't go back to that experientially. And it, it haunts your whole career or life in some ways because it's New York, it's, it's the grease paint, it's, there's a horse in the show, and someone's juggling, and it's all chaotic and weird. And there's just nothing quite like that intensity um, of or SNL. Or how hard it is. And you go, I could. Do that. And then you leave. I'm sure Chevy after years, like, and he sees the show stays huge and even huger. And you're like, fuck, that was fun. I was in that. I was in the well, mix. Yeah, that's the thing is sketch comedy is so fun. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. when, I, when I was back for the 40th, just doing sketches. Oh, right. So goddamn fun. Oh, yeah. It's just, and the people you, know, you get to work with are always super sharp, funny. Yes. You get to look around and go, God damn, all these people are great. And, they, and then you then they go on to do great things and you go, shit, mm-hmm. everyone was good. I was not wrong. It feels yeah. like it's more pressure now, but you guys, did you, when did you for yourself, Lorraine, so you're on the show and the show's not the show yet, but you're becoming rock stars. When did, you know, I think the audience starts to discover and they discovered Chevy first, probably because he was on Update and had an in one at home base. It was like very potent Chevy. But when do you feel like, when did you personally get comfortable you feel uh, were you comfortable right away it took me i feel like 60 shows 60 to get I, i'd say i was better after the third season fourth season it took me you know, i mean to be really having fun to go back full circle to like just enjoying it because everything is picking and wigs and going and then the cards and changing to get relaxed how did you feel you had a breakthrough with a certain character i mean was it the coneheads or any sketch you remember where I've got this. We're we're winning. We're a winning team. We're rock stars. <laughs> or maybe it was immediate for you guys. I don't no, know. No, I was very young and I was very inexperienced. You were like twenty one or something. No, no, I was twenty three, but I was a very young twenty three. That's young. Yeah, young. For yeah. I was a young twenty three. That's what I have to say about that. Yeah. But okay. um, <laughs> I was very inexperienced, oh, and I did not a <laughs> have a lot of confidence. And so um, I can't say that I ever got to a place where I felt comfortable. 
Um, mm -hmm. When I was when I I was doing something either that I wrote or that I really had an affinity for and felt like I could score with, those were great times. I mean, Marilyn Miller wrote this Barbara Streisand song for me, and I was just thinking about it the other day because someone was talking about. Uh, I think it was the uh, documentary on Mr. Kelly's and that Barbara Streisand does the intro on that. And I was thinking, you know, um, it was a complicated song. I was the only one who could sing a little bit better than everybody else, uh, the girls. Mm -hmm. And I just remember afterwards uh, that kind of explosive applause when it was over. And as I'm bowing and my legs are shaking, you know, it was such a great moment and experience to have but i didn't have a lot of those you know yeah did you like singing did you sit with someone we had cheryl uh oh, and cheryl, mark yes. shaman we had cheryl and mark shaman and mark shaman worked on the show he did well i was there for a couple of years then he went off and did movies but he was oh there God. with cheryl I and didn't know that. This is just for people listening. <laughs> we, you know, you're, there, if there's a musical number, it's so much fun to sit down. Well, let's just say Cheryl was so yeah. wonderful and she could just she's play great. anything and oh you, you had a song you wanted to do. I think she said she did Black Magic Woman. Is that Santana? I don't yes, know who did it that. Is. She it played is. the chords backwards for the church chat theme <laughs> stuff like oh that. Oh my God, how brilliant. <laughs> but wow. she would help you with notes and know you were gonna harmonize and we're playing Cowboys and we're harmonizing Woody Harrelson and she would help you. And I'll speak to the, you, I wanna hear your experiences. I had one freaky thing of, I was in a booth with Willie Nelson. He had his old guitar. And then he was learning uh, a song. Maybe I didn't, and I'm seeing oh him God. learn it in real time. Oh wow! But you, you have those kinds of moments. You, in, in terms what? of the movies, the, the hosts that came along in those five years. Who, who what, does anyone stick out? Or oh, the hosts. The hosts, because you're oh, then you're meeting like you, you had, had a lot monster of stars come through. It's unreal. I was. Richard, Pryor, yeah, Richard right? Pryor. I had met Richard Pryor when I was 14 because he was friends with my sister. Oh, and, and he was playing the troubadour guys, the troubadour. Wow. He was playing the troubadour. And West Hollywood. So, yeah. yeah. So I met him when I was 14. So when he came to host the show, I was like, uh, I'm Tracy Newman's little sister. Do you remember me? You know? <laughs> and he was so great to me. He was just he was you know, sweet. Wow. Always yeah. like there are three people who are my main influences, Eve Arden, Madeline Kahn and Richard Pryor. Those are like the holy trinity mm. for me. Madeline Kahn's uh, another monster. Did she come host? Twice. Oh, how great. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. So, they, that, how, so that, that's the exact example of what happens to you on Saturday Night Live. So you, you have this mentor who doesn't know, and then you're, now you're in a sketch with them. I know. It's It's killer. all surreal, right? Dana, so what great. about Lorraine? Did I read that um, you were stopped? But, I mean, this is where your career just hits a zenith when you got stopped by John and Yoko. Is that true? Yeah, I was uh, I was coming <laughs> from a photo session with Francisco Scavolo. I was in full makeup uh, for the read through with Jill Kleberg. And Jill out of my, Kleberg. I'm walking through the lobby of Thirty Rock, and through my peripheral vision, I see these two forms, and they come into focus. Holy and it's shit! John and Yoko. Mm. God. Damn. And as they pass in front of me, John goes, "Hi, Lorraine." You know, <laughs> not a hi. Hi, wow. Lorraine, you know? Wow. And I was like Lou Costello in those series, you know, <laughs> like horror <laughs> movies. Maybe Frankenstein. <laughs> was like, I, 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 exactly. That's I, it. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. exactly what I was like. Uh, John Lennon. Oh, I yeah. always, oh you know, the, there were so many intersections that you happened to have my cast with different people and Paul McCartney and so forth. But yeah, it was always bittersweet. I would love to have met John Lennon. Oh, my God. Yeah. Would love well, to Well, Christopher have Lee was the person that I was very excited to meet. I mm. had lobbied for him to be a host for three years, but it wasn't until he was in a James Bond movie that he that hosted. they put him in. And God, was he a great host. Of course, he immediately said, I do not want to do Dracula. He's like, oh, <laughs> wah, wah. Wah. He's your you know, Steven Seagal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to play Coco the Clown. I don't want to do Dracula. It's not something I feel Lorraine, like I'm I was just to. saying that because when Stephen hosted, I think I got a bad rap of, of being quoted in sometimes these stories that that's our worst host. But 
the truth is, I, I did <laughs> like Steven Seagal and I liked his movies. And I was just trying, I was, I was saying he was sort of known to others as a bad host. He wouldn't roll with the flow. And I think both of you know that the best thing to That's do if you're a host is to just put your hands up and go, what do you want me to do? And if you're yeah. Christopher Lee, we'll make a track that we won't make you look like an asshole. This will be a funny version. People will like it. And he wouldn't do any karate uh, uh, monologue. And we, we wanted to do kung fu fighting and or something stupid. And he, and he just was <laughs> latching on to wanting to be cool. And, and I got what he was saying. He's like, that's, I have an image and it was just too hard to, to, to trust us and talk him out of that. That's all. He wasn't a bad guy to me. I, well, I, I didn't mean to imply that he was difficult. He was absolutely great. Sure. But you know, a lot of people don't want to do, do that. Yeah. I, that's what I'm saying. A lot of, a lot of people just say they get on there or the music you, you, we had that a lot. The music doesn't want to do their hit song. <laughs> and you want to go, you get two songs. You, you could do whatever you want on the second one. But the first one, can you please do your hit? You know. It's kind of when a, when a, when a host comes in, like, you know, there's an athlete or we had, a, we had George Steinbrenner, a billionaire, owns the New York Yankees. So George Steinbrenner. So he's got kind of, you know, he's a billionaire. He's George. And, and uh, Al Franken pitched him something to the effect in the sketch, he would be on all fours in a diaper oh with boy. a dog collar. It's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Just, you're like, Al, oh he's not going to do that. <laughs> well, I think it's really funny. Remember though. Conan was saying at dinner the other night, we oh, saw Conan, God. he was saying, he he was, he and Bob Odenkirk had to go pitch to George Scheinbrenner and he, and he fucking hated it and said, I'm not doing that shit, get out of here. And they leave and Lauren goes, give it another try. What? Go back in? Yeah, they yeah, go, we have was, to go back in. Oh, my in. God. I did a sketch once. It was during Matthew... Um, Broderick? Married to uh, Sarah Jessica Parker. Bro the Broderick, yeah. Broderick. Matthew Broderick. So we were all bare-chested in diapers in the sketch. And so, <laughs> and this, so the sketch bombs. I mean, it really <laughs> bombs. I mean, it's dead quiet. And then you have to walk off. There's no, it's too busy. No one puts a rope. You're walking through 8H, <laughs> no through rope. the audience with a big diaper on and a sketch <laughs> that just shit itself. And then you, I looked at an audience member and did a little like, hey, how you doing? A little wave. And they looked away. <laughs> <laughs> they were like embarrassed that was in my for first season. They oh, looked away. Shit. Oh, the pain. The pain. I know. Oh, just like, God. It's all about humiliation. That's what comedy is. Dude, I mean, in a know, sketch, if it's bombing, the it's the grossest feeling to sit there looking at the, you're looking at the cards, you're near next line's coming, you're like, we should end it right now. It's going nowhere. I, <laughs> yeah, they're takes not buying. your chances. The sickest oh if God. it kills a dress and then on air you're like, what happened? I know. That's the worst. Well, that's the alchemy of the show. You know? Shit. Well, it's sometimes the dress show is so hot and you're like, uh, I don't like this. Yeah. Because then the air show is not so hot and a lot of invited guests and then all of a sudden the same and it's a half the laugh and then you, you've gotten spoiled with the uh, dress show. But sometimes the air audience was the best, so you never knew, but it was a high wire act. Lorraine, uh, I don't want to keep you forever, but do, do, you ever, do you ever get mad and say MEPS? Say what? Maps. 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 What are you saying, Coneheads? Maps. It's Mebs. Oh. M-E-B-S. Maps. Wow. M-E-B-S. Mebs. Um, M-E-B. I've been well, saying it no. wrong. I've been saying it wrong every time I stub my toe. That's all right. I was in Coneheads. I was in the Coneheads movie. Really? Yeah, I played. Oh, that's uh, great. That's I, right. I played. You uh, were in the Cone. I wasn't in that one, but I, I just Dana, loved, it I was that... almost jury duty. It was everybody. It was Ellen DeGeneres, Phil Hartman, I know. Sinbad, Schneider, Sandler. I was too big. I was too big at the time, and I, I had a beach house, and I didn't really. You know, um, <laughs> I was the, turning uh, down a lot of things. I'm just processing this idea of when it came out. The idea that the character's name was what the character was. So the Coneheads had Coneheads. <laughs> so I always love that. And that's why I said the church lady is the church lady, you know, or Where people would Dr. probably call it. Dr. Evil. You sketch where she, he plays like a church lady. Right. It, well, did, did that, I, I mean, did Carol Burnett and uh, Flip Wilson or whatever, did they do that? Because that was the first time I saw it. It's a certain knowing dry silliness that the character's name is what the, the character is. Or does that predate yeah. SNL? But I love I, that about I Coneheads. don't know. You I don't do know not, is the answer. I don't know, Dana. I don't know what happened with Flip Wilson. <laughs> exactly. Oh. 
<laughs> I love all those variety shows. Now, as a they were kid. great. Lorraine, do you laugh when you when you're going to do cone heads in, in rehearsal? Does it kill at the table, or it, where is there any weirdness along the week? Going, what if this just does not work? I adored Danny's writing. I yeah. absolutely adored it, and he could do mo- no wrong, as far as I was concerned. Yeah, Even if that. it was like something really subtle and tasty that I knew the audience would not get. That mm-hmm. was fine that with me. That is fun, too. Because, you know, some of those sketches, you're like, I don't care how it does. I love it. We need to do it. And Lauren's good at keeping stuff like that on. He's like, yes. I don't care if it doesn't work. This is what we, this represents us. That's a good sketch. Jack Handy used to write a lot of really weird ones. And we all loved him at Read Through. And he goes, put That's it on. That's part it on. of the Whatever magic yeah. of the show. Yeah. Is that yeah. that sensibility is allowed, even if it doesn't kill. And yeah, Dan Aykroyd would write these long, he would talk really super fast and have all this language coming out God damn. of him, you know? And you'd have to just figure out later what he was saying. But the Conads was silly and it was, I mean, how many times did you think you did that? It seemed like it was on a lot. Gosh, I, I do not know. I just know that the, the one time that we did an extended version where we filmed us going back to Remulac. Mm-hmm. Remulac. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, we had never been in the cones longer than the length of a sketch, but this was like a whole day. And the spirit gum Fuck. started to burn. Uh, you know, this is where it was anchored here. Unproven. Yeah. Here, spirit, yeah, it starts here. to burn your skin. Oh, oh, my God. And so, you know, Jane and Danny were in the front seat, and they just started smoking weed. And I was <laughs> in the back seat. and we Were you on location not- or something? Yes, we were shooting on location. And was, oh, I'd be terrified. It was all improvised too, because you know we didn't get permits. We went to a gas station to uh, fill the he tank. He was walking and, around. You know, and Danny funny. did a bit of drinking the the gasoline, but you know it was like gorilla because <laughs> sure. we got no permits or anything oh, like and that. And you're in your outfit, your giant yes. head and everything, walking around. Yes. I got a question: funny. When you do cone heads. Uh, did you have to do it either cold open or after update because there's so much work? It was work always when, at the top of the show. When I yeah. did Gap Girls, it was so much work. They could only put it first or after update because that's the biggest chunk. You have update and music and that's like 12 right. minutes or something. And did you yeah. get stoned that day then? No, with I Danny? didn't. No. I, did, I didn't I, like I've never, I, I never was able to perform high. I mean, I Me tried neither. it with a couple beers once so out of nerves. work can do, no. yeah. Me Tried neither. it stone once, didn't work well, for Well, you me. know, heroin is good for doing sketch work, you know, dear. I think but the, the meth, thing about meth is what is... makes James Woods. It's The <laughs> meth is what informs his choices. Marcy, please, more popcorn. Anyway. Um, but, you know, that thing that you said about Lauren is very astute because that is what causes an audience to come to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it's like you you don't write for them you let them come, you write for us yeah. and you let them come to you. And some things like, like cheeseburger, cheeseburger, one of those, like they, that might not work the first time. There's a lot of sketches that might not work. And then by the time it comes oh, on, yeah. you don't realize they really did like it. They had to watch it and think about it. And then their friends talk about it and you go, that is good. It gets, it's kind of hooky or even if it's not a catchphrase, yes. just a smart bit. And then you go, oh fuck, that's bigger. But also than that I was active and high energy. And I've yes. said this before, but for me personally, when I was doing Johnny Carson on the show and sort of a it's new a way. great of, impression, by the way. Just, thank you. My uh, kind of my favorite thing, because I did, I thought I enjoyed it so much. And I had Phil, of course, there, um, that oh, the drafts God, I, I didn't forgot. He did, God, oh, I yeah, forgot he did anything. You are correct, sir. You yes. are correct, For those sir. of you at home, who, uh, you're watching a uh, television, <laughs> and um, that's how you're seeing the pictures. We are not actively in your living room. You know, the I, how oh, Johnny would God. include everyone in the country in on stuff. Yeah. And I didn't care. And I was in my sixth season or something, but I wasn't thinking whether it was going to get a laugh because I intrinsically knew it was so fucking, it was almost yeah. too funny. Some things that, I'll watch sometimes are so funny that I know I'm going to, I can't even laugh as hard as I want to laugh. I'm going to laugh later. Because you want to hear it. I want to hear it and it hits you so hard. But the rock and roll sketches are easier. It was, you look at an old sketch, like even from Lorraine's uh, seasons and you go, I didn't even really get that back then. Like how funny it was. Like I was too young. And now you look back, you go, holy shit, that's so well done or smart or because I was just like looking for the easy jokes. I'm younger, you know, and then it, then you get older and you start to like different stuff. But you go back and go, oh, fuck, that was so good. Yeah, that's an interesting point. I've experienced that, too. Yeah. 
Did, did you go on update a, a lot and, and do characters? Um, I, I did it a couple of times uh, when um, <laughs> when Sid Vicious <laughs> murdered his girlfriend. <laughs> There's a uh, hilarious <laughs> topic. Go ahead. I went out. on as his mother. I went <laughs> on as his mother saying that he was a good boy, you know. And uh, <laughs> I think Brian was Sid Vicious. You know, and he just had the wig on and he just looked completely <laughs> mad. You know, and I was just going on. I, just, I did my best, you know. I did my best. my best. I don't know. I don't know. We've had a great time here. Oh, my we God. We had a great Michael chat. Kane. That's and a good I don't but then, know. of course, I did the, the, the reporter, you know, Lorraine Newman, the reporter. Which was kind of a, in that sort of reporter dialect in a sense, yes. the language of... Breaking yes. news right now, this at the whole, that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. The, I'm standing here. You know, <laughs> yeah. I, I always had heard, you know, I, f I heard that song and, you know, you know what I'm talking about, Dana, the song mm -hmm. that, that they do that, that is a newscaster song. Oh, right. That. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well no, the song in their, news. The, the voice. in their dial. Oh. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, oh, got you it. Know. Yes, it is. Oh, da, 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 da. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's it is a song. I did it in stand up, and I don't know if I got it from Robert Klein, but it was a newsman ordering dinner with his wife. If I can remember, it was like a surprise kind of on my wife tonight. He's at a restaurant. <laughs> She'll have the steak medium rare and a cup of black that. coffee instead of their traditional cream and sugar. I'll I have my saw coffee. that bit. You did. I must have How done it on a talk show it? or something. I could have done okay. it on a talk show or or stand up. That's but, a great uh, bit. Uh, I love, I love, I'm like you, I love all voices, I love all dialects, yeah. and I so enjoy when I see uh, people do them on Saturday Night Live, uh, the new young cast member does a Trump that is so brilliant. Oh my God. And so, and I just, that's like so funny and so brilliant, I, I you know, I, oh. I have to like watch it later almost because he's doing so many hooks, excuse me, and the people, a lot of people that are saying many, and he's doing his all that Biden stuff. His Biden is great too. His Biden is just, Come on. his well, debut. This is good stuff. We can do this. <laughs> we can do, no, here's the deal. My father lost his job. I'm not kidding around here. We can in <laughs> fact do better. We can. Whispers, I'm, I'm out of my mind. <laughs> Let me smell your hair. Biden just... is an interesting one. You know, the evolution of <laughs> doing a president is that the country still has to get used to Biden. The kind of defensive guy is come out a little bit angry and then befuddled all the different flavors he has, but we're still discovering him, the whisper thing. Yes. And then he goes kind of loud. Yeah. And yeah. sort of my dad would do that when he was 90. It was kind of a patronizing whisper because I know what I'm doing. Oh, man. That's right. We can do this. <laughs> <Come on now. laughs> And number one, the one part. Number two, what the guy said. Number three, come on, folks. Never, he's always <laughs> admonishing on. us for not understanding. It's not rocket science. <laughs> there, there's some around. really, really interesting new cast members. Yeah, uh, Chloe Fine. She, she's, she's a groundling. She's a friend of my daughter Hannah's. Been I telling me about her for years. So I watched your daughter today. She's she's really, really funny and talented. Thank I just saw so her on much. Colbert because I knew I was going to be talking to ah. you. And yes. she reminds me of you. There's a droll, really? dry. Yeah, I mean, there's uh, just a. Uh, well, I would just say this: her stuff is very smart. You know. Thank you. Yes, we're we're just you know beside ourselves. Um, uh, I I she she belongs there. I mean, she's going to. She is having a career. She she's on Hacks now, yes. and she's just really good. And so I can't imagine what that must feel like. To have a daughter, have someone have success because you oh, you're, look at her, her mom, and now you're the daughter, and so following a big act to follow, and she's doing great. great well, job. her talent is completely different than mine, and my older child's talent is also they're also they started doing stand up when they were fifteen, and they're wow. on they're on Los Spookies, Julio's show, mm. um, and uh, they both their talent is completely different than mine. And that is exciting to watch. But, yeah. you know, my only contribution really was <laughs> when this is so inappropriate. But we when I was driving, when I was driving them to school, I mean, this is like grade school. Mm -hmm. I would play the Sklar brothers and Maria the Bamford and Pat funny. Oswald, you oh, know. Yeah. Okay. I mean, Maria you know, great, this, yeah. Cause Stuff. mommy needed to be entertained. Damn it. <laughs> yeah. You know, I was not going <laughs> to listen to radio fucking Disney another second, you know, Oh, so, you gave him some good stand-ups. Wow. 
Yeah. But your daughter, came, when she came on Colbert the first time, this is Hannah, she did kind of like a little story about her mom and dad and sperm donors and stuff. And it was very, very sketch. That's why it wasn't traditional stand-up. That's why it reminded me of yeah, your style. Yeah, she's very different. And I but saw different. her set at Dynasty Typewriter this last Sunday, and it was pretty much new material and... 40 minutes set and it was so good and so interesting. It was like, how the hell did you come up with that yeah. stuff? You know, interesting. Wow. Well, that's a a, a great way to close the podcast because that's yeah, that's like this gigantic, perfect full circle. circle. Yeah, talking about that and you know, uh, the apple does not fall very far from the tree. You'll uh, find. Uh, but Lorraine, anyway, that's nice that's very sweet, you. Lorraine. I'm you so too, happy. David. I think I met one of your daughters or both of them at that Al Franken thing we did. <laughs> it was probably Hannah. <clears throat> probably Hannah. Yeah. yeah, she's you know whatever, just a sweet little girl. Yeah. But now she's oh, that's cool. Um, well, I've really enjoyed this a lot. This was I hope so you fun, did. you guys. I really did, and uh, thank you for having me too. And good luck with it. I know it's it's a really fun thing to do. Check in next week where our guest will be Ellen Cleghorn. Fly on the Wall has been a presentation of Cadence 13. Please listen, then rate, review, and follow all episodes. Executive produced by Dana Carvey and David Spade, Chris Corcoran of Cadence 13, and Charlie Finan of Brillstein Entertainment. Production and engineering led by Greg Holtzman, Richard Cook, Serena Regan, and Chris Basil of Cadence 13. <laughs>